Let's review the six trig functions. Sine, cosine, and tangent are our three major trig functions. And tangent can be thought of as sine over cosine. Now, each of these three main trig functions has reciprocal. The reciprocal of sine, not pronounced sin, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So I'm going to go back to the unit circle, just creating my own unit circle with the ordered pairs we spoke about in unit uh, 9. So let's start by just talking about what will be the tangent at each one of these major points. So if we want to think about it in terms of degrees, we're at 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, and back to 360. Remember, CBS, cosine before sine. So when I want to identify the tangent, we just look to see that tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. So if I take and do cosine divided by sine, the tangent of this angle, the tangent of this angle would be equal to sine over cosine 0 divided by 1. Well, 0 divided by any number is 0. Now up here, 1 divided by 0 at 90 degrees, also known as 1 pi over 2 as a radian measurement. The tangent, sine over cosine, sine over cosine would be 1 over 0. You can't divide by 0, so it would be undefined. At 180 degrees, 0 divided by negative 1 would be 0. I'm just going to circle these. And here at 270, also known as 3 pi over 2 as a radian measurement, negative 1 divided by 0, again, would be undefined. And now let's go back and let's look at some of these other major points. Okay, let's talk about the ordered pairs. As you can see, we just went over what are the ordered pairs here for the cosine and sine, and then I was able to easily achieve the tangents. But now let's look. In lesson number two, I talked about how do we achieve in lesson one, how do we achieve or identify the degrees and the radian measurements of the interior angles. Let's next talk about the outside ordered pairs. Now, in the videos you learn, and that's the most important way you learn how to do it, is how to create this using the right angle and the unit circle. And so with that, we learn about the 30, 60, 90 ratios and also about the 45, 45, 90. But is there a quicker way, once we understand the mathematical foundational reasoning of that, is there a quicker way to answer this? And there is. So I'm going to start here. We've already identified this as 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. Now, how do I achieve these? If you know these three, everything else is easy. I tell students to make what looks like kind of an ugly U. We're going to start here, and we're going to go down and then back up again. Let me take and place this on a sticky first. Now, when we make this U shape, give me one second here to answer a question. On so we're going to create this U shape. The U is going to go kind of, it's going to go along this curve and come back up. So U down, U back up. So I'm going to hit what would be the cosine. So cosine's coming down. That's the first value in the ordered pair, making the bottom of the U and then coming up the top in just one motion and hitting the sines. Remember cosine before sine. So down and back up. Six spots. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as I go down, I'm going to count one, two, three, and then one, two, three, back up. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And the bottom of every single one of these will have a two. And on top, we need to take the square root. Now, if we know the answer to the square root, we can change it. For instance, we're going to take just the square root of the numerator. So the square root of one is one. So I get to leave it as is. The square root of two is irrational. The square root of three is irrational. The square root of one is just one. The square root of two is irrational. The square root of three is irrational. Now, a misconception sometimes is students think the square root goes over the 2, over the 2. No, it's only going to be specific to the numerator. And so I can come over here. Now, this is the court, the quick way. It's the shortcut of being able to quickly identify cosine, sines, tangents, and so on. I do think it's absolutely critical that you understand how these were composed using the 30, 60, 90 triangles and the 45, 45, 90. That was shown in the video provided to you by Mr. McFarland. Okay, so when I look at this, if I know these three, the rest are simple. So this, I'm, I'm going to go, everything goes back to this line. 
everything goes back to this line. If I had to identify two other places that were 30 degrees above or below this line, one would be here, one would be here, one's here, and one's here. And for that reason, I get to take this, I'm going to press pause, and I'm going to copy and paste it into those. So I do need to be able to identify the difference. Remember that an ordered pair tells us where to find this point. And so they can't all have the same. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. In this position, in this position, the first number, let me press pause. My Sorry about that. In this position, the cosines are thought of like the x's are positive and the sines are positive. Now, in quadrant number two, what you think of as the x values, the cosines are negative, the sines like the y's are positive. In quadrant number three, both the cosine and the sine, so the x and the y, are both negative. So it's negative and negative. And in quadrant number four, the cosines or the x's are positive, but the y's are negative. So cosine's positive and sine's negative. Knowing that, I can come back here and go, okay, all of these should be positive. Now, radical 3 over 2 should be negative, but 1 half should be positive. Radical 3 over 2 and 1 half should both be negative. And the first one is positive, and the second one is negative. Okay, same thing here. So uh, this is 45 degrees, 45 degrees back to this line. Now there's three other places. I can go up, I hit this 45 degree mark. I can go down, I hit the 45 degree mark, and down. So I'm going to write this ordered pair in each one of those positions. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to change the signs appropriately. Negative, positive. So negative, positive both negative, positive, negative. And lastly will be the 60 degree measurement. I'm gonna copy and paste it into each one of these places. Now, how is this helping, you're wondering? Well, as I'm graphing, I need to be able to come up with points that allow me to know where, where is this going to be graphed? So I'm gonna rely on this. Remember that tangent is equivalent to the sine divided by the cosine.